in 1980, a black man was arrested for sexual assault, robbery, unlawful confinement, and entering armed with the intent to commit a felony. His case was full of discrepancies, from faulty testimonies to DNA analysis, failing to disclose evidence. Despite his DNA not matching that of the crime scene, he was still convicted to 80 years in jail. The evidence proving his innocence was buried. Fortunately, though, with the help of newly uncovered DNA evidence, he testified in court and was exonerated May 17, 2001. By then, he had served 17 years. That's 17 years lost. I know in comparison to his actual conviction, 17 years doesn't seem like a lot, but allow me to put it into perspective. 17 years, that's 6,181 days. 17 years is 148,344 hours. 17 years is 8,900,000. 640 minutes. 17 years is 531 million, 38,400 seconds. All for a crime he did not commit. Imagine yourself in his position for a fraction of that time. Your friends, your family, a whole life you've built up and it all being taken away. I'm sure that's a scary thought for a lot of you and it should be. But for me and my family, it became a very real reality because that man was my great uncle. My great uncle was sentenced to 80 years in jail because the systems put in place failed him. Stories like his are just one example of misconduct in the justice system, just as global warming, ocean pollution, and even poverty are examples of misconduct in the world and society. And for those of you who don't know what I mean, in the last 50 years, our CO2 production has increased by a quarter. The trash beaches in the Philippines are giving about 100, a million tons of trash alone into the ocean. Glaciers in Greenland and the Arctic are melting and sea levels are rising. Each and every one of you, myself included, may have wondered how we might fare against similar odds with respect to what ails our planet. Well, in my great uncle's case, it was the Innocence Project, an organization aimed at freeing those wrongly convicted through DNA research and legal reform. It was this group of dedicated, passionate individuals who supported him through his journey to freedom, helping him obtain the evidence necessary to acquit him of this terrible crime. It was also the great work of this organization that led me to believe that activism is the key to our problems, but not just activism specifically grassroots activism. It starts with the individual belief, dedication, and passion to something bigger than yourself. It's an unstoppable determination to right a wrong and affect change in the world around you. But like all things, it starts with one, you. Grassroots activism by definition is the act of bringing about political or social change by everyday people, which sounds pretty good on paper, but what about in practice? Well, all we have to do is look back at our own history, the civil rights movement when African Americans fought against segregation through peaceful protests and marches in a display of solidarity against adversity in America in the mid 1960s. The success, of course, being the ratification of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. Even now, we've seen the success of local organizations like Surfers Against Sewage, who aim to improve water quality, clean up beaches, and preserve marine life in their home base the United Kingdom. They have a huge following on social media, using a tool of the modern era to further their movement and margin for change. And today, they've spread their advocation to include surfer safety and wave protection in their pursuit of maintaining a sustainable coastline and ocean environment. Grassroots activism, believe it or not, has even taken our workplace by storm. Efforts to achieve fair benefits and working conditions, as well as some an equal opportunity for employees, regardless of race, sexuality, or even religion, have been wildly successful due to the grassroots methodology. These organisms gain momentum locally and eventually nationally by using the people's power. 
these groups are able to protect themselves and others from being discriminated against in the workplace. You know, personally, I've been lucky enough to be part of this amazing club at my high school known as Real Harmony. It stands for respect, education, awareness, and love. And its goal is to bring about cultural awareness to the greater Farmingsville community. It's supervised and curated by my fellow peers, Heaven Diaz, Madison Outing, Tyrone Butler, Olivia Parkinson, Jada Grant, Natasha Pineda, Carl Barquette, and Miss Esther Kramer. And it was created in response to a series of racially prejudiced incidents that circulated throughout my school. Instead of ignoring it, these students saw a need for action and created a club that combats that negativity through love, acceptance, and understanding. And even though Real Harmony is a fairly new club, I've already seen its impact on the community. This year, they put on a cultural showcase in which students could share parts of their culture through singing, dancing, and even fashion. It was a really awesome performance, and it wasn't just a show of cultural celebration, but cultural education, too. The club has big plans for this upcoming school year, from fundraisers to assemblies, to further their, to further their message for multicultural and ethnic um, diversity in our community. And the most amazing thing is, is that people are listening to that message. You see, through local advocacy, Real Harmony has been able to spread both knowledge and respect of the different cultures that make up Farmingdale, ensuring that students and the community alike are represented. And that's the thing about grassroots activism. It's notoriously effective. It allows the individual to see an opportunity for change and make an active and physical step towards it. It's the realization of the power of the individual and what happens when we use that power, that voice, towards a greater purpose. You know, with all that faces us as a society, the only way to conquer these mounting issues is together. I'm again brought back to my great uncle. Although he received his freedom, his life was never the same. His stories become a reminder to me that although we all hope to have that ideal happy ending, whether it's gaining freedom or fixing the world, sometimes that just doesn't manifest into reality. Maybe we don't fix the world. Maybe we survive. But we won't get to that point at all unless we take the first steps together. And we do that through grassroots activism, a local option built from communities and the ideas of each and every one of you coming together for a purpose greater than yourselves. But like I said before, Creating change, it starts with one. Is it going to be you? Thank you.